Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today and finding some time out of your busy schedules to attend our webinar. The topic of today's session is most popular e-commerce platforms, SEO pros and cons, and migration issues. Uh, our session will include a question and answer section after the presentations of our speakers, as always, so please feel free to put your questions into the chat box as they arrive, and we will answer them after the speeches are over. Uh, today we have a co-branded webinar hosted by Promoto and um, Magnetic One or Card to Card. Uh, before we start, I'd like to mention in a few words who those companies are and why we think we're entitled to speak on today's topic. Promoto Company has been providing complex online marketing services for almost 10 years now, since 2004. Uh, since that time, we have gained Google Analytics and Google AdWords Partnership Certificates, won a couple of top SEOs, badges, and nominations by Promotion Vault magazine. Also, we have become marketing partners of Shopify and Xcard e-commerce platforms and have worked with more than 350 clients worldwide, helping them solve various online marketing issues they faced. Uh, and our today's partners, um, Magnetic One Company and uh, their daughter project, Card to Cut, automated shopping cart migration service. Um, uh, they launched in 2009 uh, as uh, uh, a service that requires no technical skills for customers, which is secure, accurate, quick, and automated, and performs automated shopping cart migrations uh, from more than 50 uh, e-commerce platforms, including those we are going to be talking about today. Uh, currently, cart to cart have more than 11,000 uh, happy customers worldwide. Uh, and now I would like to introduce our today's speakers. Uh, first speaker is going to be Yuri Stuck. Um, Yuri is head of marketing department at Magnetic One, uh, and uh, after a, a year when he joined uh, Magnetic One team, he already was awarded uh, responsibility to uh, carry all marketing activities of uh, their flagship product, Cart to Cart. Uh, and finally, um, Yuri became head of marketing department. Um, and currently, he is responsible for all strategic planning, marketing management, and public relation in the company. Uh, the second speaker is going to be me. My name is Anna Karlek, uh, and I'm International Marketing Manager at Promoto. In past, I was SEO consultant and Promoto for a couple of years. Uh, uh, I used to work with uh, sites of lots of niche, including gambling, dating, and e-commerce. Uh, I'm also a Google Analytics certified individual, a regular contributor to Promoto and external blogs, and as you can see, a pretty uh, frequent speaker at the webinars. Uh, and now I will be giving the floor to Yuri, who will actually sh share his insights on shopping cart migrations. Um, hello everyone, it's Yuri. Uh, once again, welcome to our webinar and thank you for coming. Uh, so I will start with a brief analysis of how shopping cart popularity has changed over the last year and talk mainly about Magento, Shopify, BigCommerce and Volusia. So let's start with Magento. The platform was founded back in 2000 and it currently powers up to 200 web stores in the world and uh, as you can see, key countries are uh, USA, Canada, uh, Great Britain, Russia, and Australia. Um, and uh, a lot of researchers also claim that Magento currently takes up to 26% of shopping cart market, uh, being a leading solution and top one solution in the world. Uh, as you can see from this slide, Magento is used uh, at, is used mostly by uh, uh, Magento is used by a growing number of uh, merchants. Uh, according to Bill Twiss, uh, the number of Magento stores is uh, uh, growing and currently reached 7,000 mark, which means that uh, popular online stores tend to use Magento more often than any other solution. Uh, at Card2Card, -card we also see a constant growth of migrations to Magento. Approximately 40% of all our customers decide to transfer their online retailer from existing platform to Magento. Also comparing to the last year, number of migration to Magento increased up to 24%. And let's continue with Shopify. 
Shopify was launched uh, in 2006 and currently it is the biggest player on the market of hosted shopping carts. According to different estimates there are from 50 to 100,000 of stores that use Shopify and it covers around 10% of the entire shopping cart market. Uh, Shopify is the most popular in the USA, Canada, Australia, United Kingdom and Germany. Compared to Magento, um, that can boast uh, of 7,000 web stores in Alexa top million. Uh, Shopify can boast of only 2,000 of stores. Um, and the next, uh, some curious facts from CartoCart. Um, nearly 6% of all migrations uh, are performed to Shopify. And this is two times more than the result we had in the last year, which shows us that Shopify is now getting even more popular. And e-commerce. E-commerce is a hosted platform from the USA. It was launched in 2009 and currently powers 50,000 of live stores. According to the latest researches, e-commerce covers 5 to 7 percent of shopping cart market. It is most widely used in the USA, Canada, United Kingdom, Australia and Brazil. As you can see, there are more e-commerce stores in Alexa top million than Shopify's. This is still less than Magento has, however, it is the second best results among platforms we are going to discuss today and the best results, result among all hosted solutions. Um, according to our stats, uh, nearly 3% of all migrations that cart to cart had in the last year were performed to e-commerce and vice versa, almost the same number of e-commerce merchants decided to move away. Uh, in most cases, they moved to Shopify and Magento. And a few words about Volusion. It was launched back in 1999. According to different estimations, there are from 25 to 50 thousands of stores using Volusion in the world. And Volusion is most, mostly popular in the USA, Canada, Australia and United Kingdom. Volusion is the only shopping cart that shows a decrease in the number of stores in Alexa top million from almost 3,000 to 2,800. Even though it may seem not to be a big number, however, this tendency is now seen for a few years in a row. So, actually, Volusion is losing their positions. And according to our stats, uh, another indica indicator of decreasing interest to Volusion is the number of migrations from Volusion, which is five times more than the number of migrations to Volusion. And to sum up, let's uh, check Google Trends. Comparison of all four platforms for the last few years. Note that Magento is the leader, while Shopify is getting more popular in the last few years. And e-commerce and Volusion are currently staying at the same level. However, don't forget, e-commerce is 10 years younger than Volusion. Um, next. Um, I will going to talk about general migration issues and how to, how to avoid them. Um, yes, uh, customization. It is probably the most common problem we experience again and again and it's, it's uh, really uh, hardly customized stores that uh, people want to migrate to or from and uh, uh, don't get me wrong, Installing modules, setting up themes, and making all the necessary customization is a great thing to do with your store. However, we strongly recommend to do this after data migration, not before. Uh, it will simplify your life. Uh, ex it will extremely simplify your life. And next. Uh, another common and a bit silly mistake we often see that merchants do, they forget to hide development store from Google. Uh, which results in full clone of a live store. And Google or any other search engine doesn't really like that. As a result, both sites are going down in rankings, which is definitely not the thing you would like to see with your site. And the last one, the most common issue, is um, IP problem. Uh, since uh, um, during migration, the server gets some requests from cart to cart or any other migration script that you may use. Uh, those requests may, may be assumed by a server as a threat or even a hack and block uh, and the server the IP. 
So migration will be interrupted and you'll see a lot of problems. Uh, that is why it is highly recommended to whitelist the IP you are going to use for migration at your server. Um, here is a link uh, to a short guide. Uh, we will send you the copy of the presentation so you will be able to check it later. And now let's move to some brand post migration recommendations for Magento, Shopify, BigCommerce, and Bolusion. Yeah, backup. Uh, backup all the things. It's always what we are talking about. Uh, whether you are using card to card or especially when you're using another solution, it is a good idea to have a backup. Even though uh, card to card doesn't affect the shopping cart you are moving from, and you don't even have to stop selling during the migration, we always say, say our clients to back up, just in case. And permission. Um, once again, whether you are using card to card or another solution, you have to grant uh, uh, this solution with appropriate FTP permissions in order to enable migration. It can be done with use of FTP client like FileZilla, uh, in most cases, a folder that contains uh, bridge files or a script uh, has to be granted with 777 permission. And the other common problem, uh, we also recommend to keep images in shopping cart default image folder or at least move them to this folder during the migration, since 99% of all issues related to image migration are caused because images are stored in a non-default folder. And here we come to some specific Magento migration tips. Uh, we often see people who are moving from less resource consuming platforms like Auscommerce, like OpenCart, like Virtumart uh, to Magento. Uh, and Magento requires a far more powerful hosting to work properly. Uh, it is a good idea to check if your current hosting meets uh, all the requirements. Um, I leave the link with a detailed guide here, right here, and so we could check it later. Uh, the next tip refers only to cart to cart migration, since multi-store migration is our unique feature. As you may know, Magento offers opportunity to run several absolutely different stores from a single admin panel. In case you have a platform that supports the same option like PrestaShop or OpenCart, you can migrate all of, all of them to Magento with saving all the relations between stores, products, orders, and clients. So uh, you only have to create appropriate stores in your Magento admin panel and map them the way you need. Um, and we currently see uh, a lot of merchants skipping this option and after some time uh, returning to us and asking us to remigrate the entire store just to map them correctly. And don't, to, uh, don't forget to perform reindex and clear cache after moving to Magento. Otherwise, none of the migrated products will be displayed at the storefront. I also attached a link to a detailed guide uh, here, so you can check it later. Uh, Shopify's turn now. Due to some Shopify peculiarities, when you move your clients from another platform, they are migrated as inactive users. And in order to activate them, Shopify automatically sends a follow-up letter. So it is really good idea to notify your customers about migration before doing it, to avoid misunderstandings after. Another common issue include non-standard letters such as umlauts in product names. Simply replace them before migration, otherwise it may cause some incorrect uh, uh, product names at your target store. And short intro to the third point, uh, hosted cards like Shopify, like Volusion and BigCommerce are generally migrated in two ways, via uh, CSV, XML or any other file, or uh, via API. In most cases we recommend to use API since it is more accurate and quick option, that is why you are moving, that is why if you are moving from API, you have to know where to take API key and API password. Uh, they are required to make data migration possible itself. And you can easily find them within your Shopify admin panel. And here is another link with a short guide to help you, so you could check it later. And BigCommerce. Talking about BigCommerce, there are several general tips recommended to follow. 
The first one is to make sure all your products have names. Since migration of products without names will be interrupted. And the second one is to prepare your API path and token, which is pretty much the same as for Shopify. And here is the link attached to check a detailed guide. And final evolution. Uh, the first and the most common problem our clients run into is a limited number of products available according to a pricing plan. For instance, if you have 1001 product at your source card, Volusion, or any other card, and you migrate it to Volusion pricing plan, this limit of 1000 products, your migration will fail. So before moving to Volusion, make sure your pricing plan fully meets your requirements. Another frequent problem with Volusion is a CSV file export that is only available with higher price plans. So if you don't migrate by using API, you need to make sure your pricing plan allows file export. And some general post-migration tips that can be applied to each of the uh, platforms we discussed today. Uh, First of all, ask your clients to restore their passwords if you didn't migrate them. For instance, Carticard doesn't support password migration since it violates security terms. Generally speaking, if you are offered to migrate password with 90% probability, it means that all your clients' passwords are going to be hacked and only, the, and only then transferred. I think this is not the best idea. Uh, it would be much safer to ask your clients simply restore their passwords. Uh, in one of slides before, I mentioned that it is a bad idea to customize your store before migration. However, it is the best thing you can do with your shop after migration. Install all the necessary modules, set up a template, and do all the customizations you need. Uh, here we go. The last one, but not, but not the least. Uh, Test everything before going live. Make a test purchase, uh, try to register as a user, make sure that there are no errors on your new shop and only then launch it. And uh, that's everything I wanted to tell you about. So thank you for your attention. Here is your gift from Cartucard, a special 10% discount code. If you decided to switch your platform in the nearest future, simply use it at our migration wizard. So I'll pass the word to Anna. Thank you, Yuri. Uh, it was really informative. Uh, and um, uh, as for me, before actually moving to um, uh, assessing our shopping carts from the standpoint of SEO, I would like to assess them just from the standpoint of a uh, uh, just a business owner and e-commerce owner. Uh, so what we would be usually looking for in an e-commerce platform? First of all, we want to make sure that they're affordable, uh, that they have um, uh, user-friendly and customizable design templates because uh, most of the website owners are not ready to invest huge sums into customizing their design and hiring design agencies. So uh, it is a good idea to make sure that uh, you have some templates available you can choose from. Uh, if we're talking about hosted uh, solutions like Shopify, Evolution, and BigCommerce, of course we want to make sure that they have high... Uh, if we are talking about um, um, promoting our stores, of course we want to be sure that uh, they meet all SEO and marketing uh, requirements. Um, and again, as we don't want to uh, hire a dedicated team of developers every time we want to change anything, uh, a tiny small thing uh, on our website, uh, we want to make sure that we can access the admin and that the admin has everything in place. All the features are simple, accessible, and intuitive. And of course, especially during the migration process, we are very much interested in helpful and accessible support of the platform. Uh, and besides, uh, some additional features are a good bonus, something like the social uh, integration or extensions, built-in apps, and etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, so um, let's compare our platforms uh, in terms of prices. If you look at this chart, um, from the first glance, it seems like Magento and Volusion are the best options here. But we need to understand that Magento uh, community version uh, is actually free. Yes, it is an open source um, 
platform, but first of all, it's self-hosted, which means that if with the other three, um, hosting is already included into the price because they host your site for you. With Magento, uh, you are going to take care of hosting yourself, which means that you have to spend extra money. Um, and uh, if we talk about Volusion, uh, why I've put a small <laughs> asterisk here. Uh, Volusion is reported uh, with lots of uh, hidden uh, additional fees. And uh, this is one of the main uh, reasons why Volusion gets so many negative feedback right now. Uh, because uh, they claim to have zero transaction fees, they have uh, very low uh, monthly fee prices, but in fact you end up paying extra for bandwidth, uh, for use of their uh, shopping cart software, uh, shipping software and whatnot, and it goes on and on and you can never actually uh, plan in advance exactly how much you are going to spend on uh, well, support of your website and your platform. Um, so, uh, we have Shopify and BigCommerce, right? Uh, with Shopify, um, the cheapest um, package starts from 29 per month, uh, but with the cheapest uh, plan, uh, you will have uh, to pay a transaction fees. A transaction fee is going to be 2%. Uh, with BigCommerce, uh, the cheapest um, package uh, costs more, it's almost 35, but um, you are allowed more uh, storage there. For Shopify, it's going to be only one gigabyte, and for BigCommerce, five. And, well, definitely five gigabytes seems more reasonable when you think that you are allowed unlimited amount of products. Um, and with BigCommerce, unlike Shopify, uh, you are going to be uh, charged for transaction fee only for the cheapest plan. For the other two, uh, no transaction fees uh, required. Um, for Shopify, you are not charged a transaction fee with the maximum package. Uh, with Magento, I've put like the maximum package price uh, 1,400, but actually this is not going to be Magento community already. This is Magento Enterprise price. Uh, this is for stores which are well growing really, really big, really huge, I would say. Um, uh, performance. As I have already mentioned, Magento is a self-hosted uh, platform, so uh, it is going to be pretty different here. So we are not talking about storage bandwidth and uptimes because it is going to depend on your uh, hosting provider. With Shopify Evolution and BigCommerce, um, storage um, almost always is limited. With Shopify, it's only limited with um, the first um, the cheapest plan. Uh, bandwidth is unlimited with Shopify and BigCommerce for all the packages. Uh, with Volusion, this is something that I uh, already mentioned, you are limited with 1 to 35 gigabytes and uh, whenever you exceed it, you pay extra fee. Uh, uptimes. Um, I should say that uh, the assessment that I have here, these are my personal um, opinions uh, plus opinions of our customers plus uh, the feedback that I found on the web, of course. Uh, and here, Volusion is not doing good, actually, because lots of people report that Volusion has very poor uptimes. Uh, uh, if we talk about Shopify, um, it is pretty decent, very good, I would say, but uh, sometimes I uh, notice that they tend to have maintenances at strange times of day, I would say, uh, somewhere in the evening when usually well, people tend to be very active and would like to shop something. Um, and well, no negative feedback was found for big commerce and well, I haven't personally seen anything, so I put excellent here. Uh, if we talk about site speed, it's okay for Shopify and big commerce, uh, but for Volusion, uh, obviously, if we have uh, lots of issues with server availability, uh, site speed is going to be um, a little bit worse for the end user. Uh, and with Magento, um, in terms of site speed, uh, Magento is known to be very resource consuming, as Yuri has already mentioned, uh, and it is kind of a complicated and bulky uh, platform. Uh, so it requires lots of resources, and usually Magento slide, uh, sites are slow, and this is one of the issues of this platform. Uh, simplicity and friendliness. 
uh, in terms of support, Volusion uh, has again poor reputation here. Uh, People complain that uh, after office hours it is very difficult to reach their support, although it is claimed to be 24-7. Uh, it is very good with Shopify because Shopify now currently uh, seems to be very customer-oriented business uh, uh, because uh, they are really trying to um, put uh, as much attention as possible to their users, so provide all the support necessary. Uh, with BigCommerce, I found uh, kind of 50-50 feedback. Uh, actually, uh, I personally found uh, the um, knowledge base of BigCommerce uh, very good and exhaustive because um, I cannot uh, imagine a person who would not understand anything after reading those posts because everything is step by step uh, with very um, detailed screenshots and etc. Uh, but people report that uh, sometimes support uh, fails to answer in-depth and technical questions, so uh, they tend to be superficial sometimes. And if we talk about Magento, uh, there is very little support, so you cannot call anybody, you cannot chat with anybody 24-7. Uh, all the help is help yourself find, and usually it is created by developers for developers. Um, if we talk about templates, the uh, variety and user friendliness, uh, all the platforms are doing a good job here. Uh, but uh, with Magento, the amount of them is a little less because uh, Magento is a very flexible platform, and. Uh, uh, the variety of designs and layouts for Magento would be really huge, and I think uh, that is why um, the necessity for uh, templates is not that high as with the other platforms. Uh, simplicity. Uh, as I have already mentioned, well, Magento is a pretty complicated thing, so if you are not a developer, uh, you won't be able to uh, get into grips with this platform. So definitely if you're working with free Magento version, uh, you will need to hire a team of Magento developers to help you. Uh, with the other three, it is uh, very simple. Uh, with the only trick that uh, some people report that to get into groups with Volusion, you still need some basic knowledge of HTML and CSS. Uh, as for mobile friendliness, all the platforms are doing good here. In their default versions, um, uh, they uh, provide, by default, uh, mobile friendly versions of the websites. Additional features. I personally find a uh, blog very important, uh, to have a blog uh, set up for every e-commerce store. Um, uh, this feature is not um, present for, by default for Magento and Volusion. Shopify and BigCommerce do have blogs. Marketplace. Uh, only Magento can provide you the marketplace, but I think this is not a very common thing you would usually want. Uh, this is something for more kind of advanced e-commerce owners. Uh, social commerce. A very interesting and shrewd feature. And Volusion and BigCommerce have it. Basically, it uh, allows you to sell directly from Facebook. And, well, this is something that goes ahead of time, I would say. Shopify and Magento do not have this. Abandoned shopping cart features, a very important one to catch up and try to return your customers back to finish their purchase. And uh, all the platforms have this. Daily deals, promos, and coupons, uh, well, this is a very essential feature for an e-commerce store. Uh, only Magento doesn't have it by default, but it means that you need just work to uh, have it. Or you can just install uh, one of the thousands plugins Magento has. Uh, default reviews and ratings for products. Uh, again, almost everybody has it uh, by default except for Magento. Forum features. Uh, Volusion and Magento do not provide by default. Shopify and BigCommerce do. Uh, apps and add-ins and extensions. All the platforms uh, do have them, although Magento, of course, has the, the biggest amount of them because mostly uh, all the uh, customization of Magento you can do if you do not have developers working on your store um, is done with the help of extensions, so thousands and thousands of them. Uh, now, coming closer to the point, so what do we need actually uh, for search engine optimization? Um, I think you all know that 
uh, Google uses more than 200 factors to rank websites on the web including on-site and off-site factors. Of course, none of the e-commerce platforms can possibly cater all of them. But I have created such a very short list of must-have uh, things in terms of SEO. So um, I wouldn't say that 20 are just, you know, die for points. But um, at least 15 to 16 out of this list. If you do not have any, uh, you can say that your SEO is going to be doomed. So this is very important. Um, and let's see uh, which of the platforms actually are successful with performing the access to those features. Uh, 301 redirects control, uh, definitely very important. Um, and all of the platforms provided, Shopify, Illusion, and BigCommerce actually have a feature in their admin section. Uh, Magento, uh, obviously you can uh, change your 301 redirects because you have control over everything that is going on with your server. You have access to the files on your server. You can change htaccess file. Um, then control, of course, of titles, which are still one of the most important factors, on-site factors for um, organic search rankings. Uh, so control of titles, headings, I mean h1 tags, h2 tags, h3 three tags, etc., and meta descriptions. Meta descriptions, as we know, do not influence rankings directly, but they do influence the clickability of the snippet of your site in organic search results. Uh, so here I've put uh, this plus minus mark for almost everybody except Magento, because um, usually, yes, uh, the admin provides the uh, possibility to change uh, titles, headings, and descriptions page by page. But when you want, uh, for example, if I want my product pages to have titles like product name plus best price, product name plus uh, free worldwide shipping, uh, it is already more complicated. It will require some templates, use of some templates. And uh, uh, without accessing the source code of the page, uh, I cannot possibly do that. Uh, so this is still uh, this still can be done with all of the platforms, um, but uh, with um, well some extra in-depth technology, uh, you will uh, need to understand what kind of string of code you need to insert into the source file of your into the index file of your website. And if we talk about Magento. Uh, these issues are very easily solved with just one extension, which is called Advanced SEO Suite. If you are planning to migrate to Magento, I, I really strongly recommend you to use it because actually it solves um, virtually all SEO issues that Magento has. Uh, and um, namely, it uh, enables you to create templates for titles uh, and descriptions. Uh, next here, um, of course, we want to control over pages content uh, because we know that Google can't live without texts on every pages. Google still uh, is not very good at reading pictures, at uh, understanding uh, the originality of videos and pictures and etc. So we still need to describe everything that is on the page with pieces of unique content. And uh, that is why we, we need to make sure that we have the access uh, to those snippets of content and that we have the possibility to add text to all important pages, home page, category pages, and product pages. Um, and well, um, from this standpoint, all four platforms are good to go. Uh, now, also, we want control over robots.txt file uh, so that we can control if uh, we want to block some extra pages from indexation. Uh, by default, all of the shopping cart, uh, of the shopping, um, sorry, e-commerce platforms, they generate um, robots.txt file. Uh, but sometimes uh, you have some duplicate pages on your website, which you want to be accessible by user, but you want to block from search engine bots, and you need to access your robots.txt file. And with Shopify, you cannot do that. You you, you have no control of your robots.txt file. Uh, with Volusion and BigCommerce, you have options in your admin to change it. With Magento, um, again, you have direct access to the server, 
and you can do whatever you want. Um, uh, next one is control of alt attributes for images. I put it separately because images is kind of in an alternative source of traffic for e-commerce uh, e -commerce stores. And I think it is very important because uh, users tend to search for visual images of the products they want to buy um, in the web. And this is very important to have um, optimized images to be able to rank with your product images in Google. And this is why we want control over our alt attributes and possibility to customize them. And again, ideally, possibility to um, create templates for them. Uh, but again, you have access to specific alt attributes, but um, with templates, there are issues. So you are going to need custom development for that. XML sitemaps. All of the platforms are good to go with this. Uh, they are automatically generated, automatically updated. Everything is perfect. Uh, SEO-friendly URLs and control over URLs. Uh, totally okay with Magento if you use the plugin and with BigCommerce. But um, Shopify and Volusion um, do not provide you the freedom of ch uh, changing your URLs, actually. So uh, you are uh, going to have uh, the URL mirroring the title of the page, but with dashes. Um, duplicate URL issues. Um, almost all of the platforms have duplicate URL issues, uh, but well, this is not that grave because uh, they allow you to create 301 redirects and canonicalization of URLs. So you can set canonical tags on all the duplicate pages to point to your original page. Uh, with Shopify, there used to be a grave issue with um, duplicate URLs for product pages, and now they uh, solved it, uh, and with all up-to-date templates, by default, you are going to have um, canonical tags on all um, alternative URLs. Um, Volusion also has some kind of issues with uh, homepage duplication, Magento also. But again, as I said, with real one redirects and canonicalization, you are good to go. Uh, search friendly navigation and structure. Let me explain what I mean here. Um, mostly Shopify has issues here, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, so, um, this is not a grave issue, but by default, most of the templates have um, very little categories uh, put on the home page. And usually Shopify creates one extra step before you can access your category pages. Something like on the home page, they say online shop or shop or store here. Uh, really, this is just stupid from standpoint of a user because you have come to an online shop, you already understand that this is an online shop. Just show me your categories. And um, well, this is, well, this kind of issue, it can actually be fixed easily in the admin, but most of the webmasters just don't do that. Um, next point would be breadcrumbs. Uh, this is something that uh, you can spot on your product pages. So the path of the user, uh, this is mostly for users to understand how they got there and how they can go back step by step. And besides, it is extra help for search engine boss because extra links. Um, and breadcrumbs can also be shown sometimes in uh, the snippets of your page in search, which creates extra clickability. Uh, schema org. Uh, schema org is a special protocol that uh, enables us to have such beautiful rich snippets in search. Uh, there is a huge of them, but uh, those we are most interested in with e-commerce platforms, with e-commerce stores, uh, are product snippets. So we can have ratings there, we can have pictures there, we can have availability in stock and price. Uh, and um, let us see who enables us to have this. So Shopify by default does not. Volusion, um, um, it's not like by default, but actually in their uh, help section you can find a pretty detailed post on how you can implement that with a little bit HTML knowledge. So it's almost okay. Uh, with BigCommerce, the feature is um, present by default. With Magento, again, you can have it with the extension that I have already mentioned. 
uh, yeah, I skipped a couple of points like block, but we have already talked about it. And built-in analytics integration, I mean Google Analytics here and all the platforms are good to go with it. Um, next points would be HTML, oh sorry, Open Graph Protocol. Open Graph Protocol is uh, very important for social sharing. Uh, so if uh, the platform supports it, uh, it will mean that in case uh, somebody likes or shares the post or the product you have on your site, uh, it will work uh, from uh, the URL, the title, the picture and the description are going to be pulled. So um, you want to ensure that you are not going to end up with bare URLs uh, who nobody wants to click or share further. So this is pretty important. Uh, HTML sitemaps. Um, let me check who has it. Uh, yeah, uh, all of the platforms provide HTML sitemaps besides Shopify. Uh, why HTML sitemap is that important? Because actually with XML sitemap you do not have the guarantee that all of the URLs you submit there are going to be indexed. Even Google engineers admit that they are not bound to crawl all of the links there. They just take it to consideration. But to make sure that Google uh, or any search bot crawls every URL on your site, create HTML sitemap. Because HTML sitemaps are real live links on the web and bots, they have to crawl all the links they find. So if you create good HTML sitemaps, if your platform enables you to do that, um, this is a key to very good rankings for your end pages, your product pages. And just think about it, if you have um, 5,000 product pages on your website and every product page brings just one visitor daily, this is already a huge amount of visitors every day. So please make sure that HTML sitemap works. Uh, internal linking opportunities. Uh, basically what I mean here is, again, the possibility to uh, put your product pages to the front. So to create internal links through, uh, we also recommend similar products, blogs, or people also buy this and that, and etc. And if we go back to our checklist, um, we'll see that internal linking opportunities are present with all of the platforms. Um, and uh, the last point I've put here is Google authorship verification. Actually, it's not a must uh, nowadays, but um, why I recommend you to do this? Because uh, this is just one extra precaution uh, that will make sure that Google knows if somebody steals your content, that you are still the original author of the content and the, that you deserve to be ranked higher than the person who scraped your content. Um, unfortunately, with Shopify, Evolution, and BigCommerce, uh, you do not have simple solution to uh, verification through Google. Uh, but with Magento, of course, you do because you have, again, uh, the access to your server files. Um, so how migration impacts our rankings and what precautions we need to make, we need to take? Uh, first of all, of course, 301 redirects. Uh, this is actually the huge and almost exhaustive bulk of work in terms of SEO when you migrate. Unfortunately, there is no uh, optimized solution for 301 redirecting all of your pages. Uh, I know that uh, card to card guys are working on this, but uh, this is a very grave issue. Um, and of course, uh, I hope you understand that if you do not do 301 redirects, you just simply change the structure of your URLs. Um, well, congratulations, you are going to start from scratch uh, in terms of your search engine optimization traffic, so you will just lose everything. Maybe your home page will remain the same, but believe me, it will not actually help you a lot. Uh, so make sure to do page by page redirects of all of the pages, map all of the pages of your website. Uh, ideally, we need to aim for our site to have only three server response codes, uh, which are um, accessible for users, I would say, and uh, search bots. 200 OK when we have a live web page, 301 redirect when the page has moved, and uh, 404 not found error when the page uh, is gone permanently. 
Uh, and of course, when you create 404 pages, make sure they are customized. So they uh, retain the navigation of your website. Because if a user comes to such a page, you want to make sure that he does not leave your website. That is why you need to show them uh, categories that you have, your home page, your logo, so make sure that the user still feels comfortable. Um, so again, about redirects. Uh, I strongly recommend you to create and map a complete list of your page URLs. Uh, but uh, if for some really very serious reasons you are unable to do that, at least download uh, from Google Analytics most successful in terms of traffic pages uh, and map them in the first place. Then download the most linked to pages from your Google Webmaster Tools and map them. Then map all of your category pages. Uh, and also make sure to redirect your top selling products page by page. Uh, if you have e-commerce uh, tracking enabled in your Google Analytics, you can check uh, top selling products there. Uh, but well, I'm sure that every website owner knows uh, the list of their best selling products anyway. Um, also, um, of course, if you have access to the server, uh, try to use server redirects uh, rather than uh, uh, well, add redirects in the admin um, and use uh, regular expressions to minimize the server load. Um, and of course, after you've done all of your redirection, uh, all your mapping, uh, test your redirects. Uh, there are a lot of tools, free and paid. Uh, the ones I recommend would be Xeno and Screaming Frog. Um, what they will do, they will just crawl your website and fetch you the server response codes for every page they find. And something that I've already talked about, so create good custom for for pages. Uh, other precautions. Um, make sure that at least for the first couple of months after you've done the migration, uh, you do not change anything in titles, uh, headings, and texts. Uh, first of all, make sure that you uh, move them exactly as you are to your new um, platform. Uh, and uh, just for a month at least, do not change anything there. Um, make sure to notify your customers of the changes. This is something Yuri uh, told us about. Um, but not just because of uh, well, change of passwords and everything like this. Uh, but because users are going to see that the structure has changed, that um, the loading speed uh, decreased because evidently you changed the servers and uh, it is going to be slow uh, for the first time if you visit the site for the first time. Um, so uh, just make sure that users do not get frustrated and lost when they get to your site after migration. Um, also, make sure that uh, you only use uh, your new URLs in your internal linking because 301 redirects are good, but still they do not pass fully uh, the value that your old URLs used to have. Um, so make sure to use your new URLs. Um, and of course, if you have control of, you, of any backlinks to your site um, that you used to have to your old site, change uh, the URLs to the new ones too. Because again, um, still a live link to the new page is better than a link that goes through a redirect. Um, think about internal linking patterns. Try not to change uh, things there a lot too. Because if you used to have, um, say, three blocks of similar products and now you are switched and only have one, uh, be prepared that it is going to affect uh, the quality of indexation of your product pages and, of course, um, how well Google ranks them. Uh, and some of the last points. Uh, of course, update your XML and HTML sitemaps. Well, this is most probably is going to be done automatically for you. And do not forget to submit the new URL to Google Webmaster Tools. Uh, and 
obviously measure your traffic and rankings before the migration and after migration. If you do not have the habit of measuring your rankings, which is yeah, pretty odd, I would say, for an average e-commerce website owner, uh, you can uh, use SIMrush tool to see how your website performs exactly and by which keywords it ranks in Google. Um, when you have moved, be prepared to fix at once all SEO bugs of the new platform. Uh, for example, duplicate URLs. Every, every platform has duplicate URLs issues uh, in this or that point. Um, and of course, measure and test everything. Your conversion rates, load times, uh, abandoned carts, um, rankings, again, traffic, and etc. In terms of analytics, after migration, uh, usually there are two options for what people do. They create a new analytics property and start tracking decide from scratch. Well, this is not a uh, totally bad idea, it's okay, uh, but I would recommend you to still use the same Google Analytics code, just install it on your new website. Uh, and um, a good idea would be to create segments um, to monitor um, the change of URLs that you have because the, the URL structure is going to change and uh, you will uh, be able to see actually the uh, amount of traffic, how it changes after the migration. Um, and in case you also decided to change your domain name, um, here is a very um, handy custom report for Google Analytics. If you follow this link you will just uh, get this report directly added to your analytics account. Uh, here you will be able to see the full URL so that you understand uh, which domain name uh, used to be before and uh, which domain name it is now. So you will be able to analyze exactly um, the traffic to each specific domain. Uh, and I will allow myself one small prediction also. Your organic traffic will decline anyway, but don't panic. This is just um, really natural uh, because 301 Redirect still cannot pass all the value that you have accumulated. But if you have done everything correctly and if you monitor your website, if you work in it, if you improve all the tiny issues that arise, um, you will see uh, organic traffic going back and increasing um, after four to ten weeks after the migration. So um, good luck, have a happy migration and thank you very much for your attention. Uh, and now I would like to offer a special bonus from Promoter Company 2. Uh, this is going to be free online marketing audit of your website. Uh, it will uh, look like a small personalized webinar um, with one of our Google certified experts. Uh, during the webinar you will get quick usability SEO and PPC audit of your current website. Uh, get some uh, best practices conversion rate optimization tips particular uh, to your website and you will get some general online marketing insights and tactics uh, applicable to your site personally. Uh, I'm sending right now the link to chat. Oh, sorry. Uh, let me just pick the link. Yeah, so please feel free to uh, make use of this um, offer. And I remind you about uh, the offer of card to card 10% discount code for all uh, website migrations with coupon code webinar gift. Uh, we are ready to move to our questions. Let me check if uh, we have them. Well, I think we have a question. Um, what do you think of Virtue Mart? Yuri, are you with us? Uh, yes, uh, Virtue Mart, uh, yeah. Do you have any particular opinion about Virtue Mart store? Uh, yes, it's a um, very powerful platform since it uses uh, Joomla as CMS. Um, however, we've seen a serious uh, 
degrees uh, in interest to virtual mart uh, because of rise of WooCommerce, uh, which actually can offer the same functionality, but it is based on WordPress, which uh, far more easier to use and can offer the same functionality as uh, Joomla. So uh, virtual mart that was like number two platform for about two or three last years is now uh, getting behind uh, of WooCommerce, which shows uh, uh, really great growth. Yeah. Thank you. Um, well, I guess we only have one more question about if the slides are going to be available. Yes, we are going to uh, send everybody the recording of the video the video of the webinar and the slides of our presentations. Um, your attention. Um, yeah, I see one more question coming right now uh, about um, BigCommerce migration. We have a legacy website, 14 years old, and we are migrating to BigCommerce. There are a lot of internal links that will be broken. Would you recommend that we remove them all and then use uh, the built-in recommend product function to associate products instead of building a new links? Now let me think about what I read. I guess that, well, um, it is okay to uh, change internal linking structure a little bit uh, unless um, uh, unless you still have uh, the decent amount of links uh, going well back and forth. I mean that ideally uh, every product has to have internal links, so at least um, to the neighboring uh, the neighboring problem has to link it to it and uh, the other, well, like the previous and the next. Uh, so if um, the overall structure is going to be broken, this is pretty understandable because uh, the recommended products engines, they work differently for every uh, platform. Uh, but still, if you uh, remain the blocks in place and the amount of internal links that uh, kind of connect the products remains virtually the same, uh, you are good to go. As I said, you will, of course, you will see some change in rankings and some products will decline, others will grow, but this is only natural. Uh, if you monitor it, you will be able to quickly fix it. If you see that some products kind of leak um, link juice and leak internal linking, uh, you can just add another uh, section of similar products and another section of internal links. Hope that answers your question. Uh, and uh, anyway, um, we had a big commerce um, team member present our webinar, and um, um, I think that I will email you after the webinar his uh, phone number and his email, so that you can ask uh, some questions if you have something particular to ask, to ask about big commerce uh, directly from him. Uh, thank you very much, everybody. Um, well, I hope we provided some uh, good and useful information for you. Please follow other tips that we are able to provide uh, at our blogs and social networks. Uh, thank you very much. Hope to see you online uh, next month at our events too. Uh, have a great rest of the day. Goodbye.